Hey everyone, Ryan Carter here. Welcome to another WordPress tutorial. This time I'm doing sort of a case study with uh, T-E-E-H Travel or THTravel.com as you can see up here. This is a travel site and kind of local business review site uh, for a friend of mine uh, by the name of Tony Hodgkinson. So I guess the TH is for his initials on TH Travel. Uh, but what I want to show you today is how we can install and configure um, a way to back up the website. So what we're going to do is go to plugins and add new and get it to load. I don't know what this is. I guess that's part of the theme. I'm just going to use the search box right here. We can make that go away. And I'm going to type in updraft. Now I did a little bit of research before this and updraft plus looks like the best um, WordPress backup solution. And you can tell if you look down here, 800,000 active installs. It's got five star rating, 2,100 of them. That's a very good sign. It was last updated two weeks ago, which tells you that they're active in development on it. So they're doing good stuff. And it is compatible with the version of WordPress we're using. So it's going to play nicely. What this does is it allows you to install, which I'll do now while I'm talking. You install this Updraft Plus WordPress backup system. We're going to activate it. And what it does is it allows you to back up your website, your database, all your files, your theme files and everything to the remote option or download or email of your choosing. So how we're going to do this is we'll go to settings, which is usually where it puts everything. Here we go. Updraft plus backups. Now it's installed, but what we want to do is configure it and get it ready. So down here, let's get rid of this notice. We can back up now, but that's not what we want to do. We want to go to settings. And there's a ton of options you can do here. And uh, we'll pick one of those in a minute. But first up here, you can say, I want you to automatically back things up or manual. Um, I think we want to do this daily to make sure that everything's being backed up and retain this number of backups. Um, I'm going to put seven days in there. And if Tony wants to change that to something else, he to totally can. Uh, some sites I've put 30 in here, so it's 30 days of backup. But a week is usually enough time if you know something went wrong with your website. A week is usually enough time to go, oh no, I got to get in there and do this. So you need enough time when your backups happen to automatically happen daily for a week. So let's say something goes wrong, your site crashes or the host goes crazy or something happens, right? You want seven days of backups. So if something goes wrong a few days ago and you don't notice it right away, you can still get to it and fix it before it actually becomes an issue. So that's what I'll put seven for now because that's a pretty decent amount of time. Um, let's see. You can add other options if you could do the premium thing and sign up for their paid version. That's what premium is. I hate when they say plus in the name because it makes it look like a premium, but it's not. After F plus is a free one and then updraft plus premium, which is a lot of words to say. Uh, that is the paid edition and you get more things like how to uh, back up at a specific time or whatever. So whenever it should take place. Um, so that's a little bit more involved, but we don't really care about that right now. We just want to back it up and make sure it's working. So you can back up to Google Drive. You can back up to, they have their own service here. If you click that, then you can actually buy space and back up with them. Um, I like the option of Dropbox because if you already have Dropbox, you can back up your site even on one of the free accounts. It's probably not terrible unless you're doing a lot of media and a lot of files and stuff. Then you might need a bigger one. Um, Google Drive gives you good options too. You have quite a bit of space there. If you have a Gmail account or if you've had it for any length of time, I think some Gmail accounts right now are like 15 gig and that, that can also uh, use your storage on Google Drive as well. So, um, and you can buy Google Drive space if you need to really, really cheap. I think it's 99 cents for 20 gig or something for a year. I can't remember if that's right or not. You have to look it up. But anyway, um, they might have changed it by now. But anyway, you can use Google Drive to do this. You can use FTP, which is actually a great option. If you have a web host that has space that you can use, and a lot of times if you have like HostGator or GoDaddy or one of those, uh, I don't know what the equivalents are in the UK, but something like that. You can use an FTP service or even a secure FTP service down here to back up your files that way. I actually just set this up for uh, my brother, uh, yes, uh, not yesterday, this morning, earlier today, 
and helped him set up a backup on my server because I've got his website on the server, but then they're also backing up. So if something happens to his WordPress install, if he does something to it or a plugin messes it up, anything that can happen, I can always restore his site from the server. You can also use a different FTP server if you're really paranoid about things going wrong. So you always have a backup copy like in an offsite location like they would do in, let's say, Stargate, for example, because they have a beta site that they would move things to. Anyway, that's a little bit too nerdy for us right now. You can also do Microsoft OneDrive, which is really cool. So you can get a free OneDrive account. I can't remember how much they give you now. Um, at one time it was 100 gig. It might be like 15 now. I think you get extra space with OneDrive if you share it with friends. Um, so you can share that with a few friends. They get free space. You get free space. That kind of thing. Same thing as Dropbox. So anyway, you, you pick one of these options. And I usually do Dropbox. Uh, but since this isn't my site, this is Tony's site. I'm not going to do that um, and back up stuff to my account. But anyway, you basically choose what you want. OneDrive, Dropbox, any of these. And you can also do Google Cloud. You can send the backup to your email if you really want to, you know, use that Google account and all the 15 gig they give you in the Google account to back your site up to that. You could have a whole email account just to back things up to if you want to. could just be, you know, th travel dot com and you can make the email like backups at and make a whole email address at gmail just for that and have it back up to your email if you want that's another really cheap way to do it uh, if you want to do that s3 is also um amazon and webdav is kind of an older spec but you can do that as well all kinds of stuff anyway uh dream objects is the dream host version if you have that if you have a hosting account at dream host i would check this one out it kind of gives you some details here so what you do is you end up putting in the information here for DreamHost or Google Drive, it will ask you for your client ID and you have to, it gives you really good instructions and screenshots. So they've done a really great job of explaining to you how to do all that stuff. So I won't waste your time there. But um, let's say we went with uh, like Microsoft OneDrive or whatever. Then you would go down here and say what you want to back up. It excludes things that already say backup. So you don't back up your backups. That would be kind of dumb. And then upgrade cache, all those things that you really don't need to back up, it doesn't do those. It does your plugins, it does your themes, and it does your uploads folder, which is all of your images and media. So do all of that for you, and you can actually customize it a little bit and tell it what you want it to do. So what you do then is you can also encrypt it if you do their paid version, which I don't usually do, but you can. Um, you can also have a report sent to you by email when this is complete. So when this backup job is run automatically daily here, it will automatically email and you say, hey, guess what? You have a new backup, just so you know, just letting you know. There's also some expert settings I haven't really messed with. So once you're done and you pick this, um, it will tell you, oh, OneDrive support is available as an add-on. So I don't know if that's paid or not, but you can check that out. Anyway, once you sign up, I know Dropbox, I've tried this one actually myself. So after you click save, then you come back and it will actually take you to Dropbox and ask you to sign in and make sure that you can sign into Dropbox for your backups. So you do that and then you sign into Dropbox and it says, okay, we're all good. And then you hit save and you're good. And then it will automatically back up. Now, how this works, most things in, in WordPress work this way. It's not on like a server automatically kicking off the backup job. What happens is when someone visits your site, so hopefully every day somebody will visit your site or maybe you do if you're the owner of the site, it will actually run these backup jobs. It's it's called WP Cron. And what it does is it actually runs things when people visit the site because it knows there's activity. Usually sites built in PHP like WordPress can't do anything until they're activated in a way. So when somebody visits, that's what actually kicks off the backup job. So if you have some traffic going to your site, you're probably good. Anyway, if you want to do an actual backup yourself by hand, you can do that by just clicking backup now says you haven't saved your changes. Yes, we know. That's fine. You can say backup now. It's not going to back it up online. Okay, so it did. it's making a backup. You can see how it's doing that here. It is making a zip file. It's adding all kinds of stuff. It's telling you all the details here. Way too much information for most people. But nerds kind of like it. So I'm like, ooh, cool. So it'll tell you your free disk space. It'll just tell you where. It, so it's making a file right on your web host here. Backing up your whole system there you go you can see and you can also download the log file it's really great this plugin is really great as far as i've seen so far 
Um, there's all kinds of other stuff you can do, but that's really the gist of it. That's kind of what I would recommend doing. Uh, real basic stuff. Hook it up with your Dropbox or whatever accounts that you have that you want to use for it. Um, to let you know how it works with Dropbox is it will actually make an apps folder on your Dropbox if you don't have it already. A lot of uh, different apps do this for you. And it, if you don't have anything in the apps, it will actually add a updraft plus folder in there and then inside of there it will put all of your files now if you want to back up more than one website you'll have to go with their premium paid edition but um, you can do that one way that I got around that is by using FTP you can actually specify what folder it goes into if you create the folder on your hosting site FTP site if you're familiar with FTP you can change the folder so you can put more than one site into those backup folders on your FTP server. So that's one way to kind of get around that requirement of having the paid account for doing more than one on Dropbox. So that's kind of the downside of some of the like Dropbox and Google Drive is you have to put only one site on there unless you pay for it. FTP, you don't have to do that. You can just automatically have it saved to a different folder. So that's really handy. And FTP is a pretty good way to save things because it just happens and you don't have to mess with it. So that is the plugin Updraft Plus and how to use it. It is very good, and so far I'm pretty happy with how they do the file structure and the, the way they break things out. It just makes it easy. So you can go, you can actually go look at the files and see uh, the backups and see what's going on. If you need to restore, all you do is go here, and it'll show you. We did this backup here. You can see the log of what we actually saved. You can click each one to download these, or you can click restore to restore the site to what it was when all these things were saved. It's kind of like having restore on your computer. You can just kind of revert it back to something. It's very handy. It's, it's like um, how Dropbox does like files. If you lose a file or delete it or whatever, you can always get it back. This is kind of how that works. It's great. So anyway, really recommend that plugin. Um, hopefully this helps. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. So um, if you found better solutions, let me know that as well. This is the best one that I've found to date. So um, thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.